God according to your faith. He just you the No. It shall be done to you according to the goodness of the Father's heart toward you. Welcome to this sixth and last week of our prayer and fasting battle. As we press on looking forward to be filled with the Holy Spirit and emerge as leaders, we get to further know the Holy Spirit and His work in the life and the ministry, a topic that Brother Theodore developed this night. He has used Apostle Paul as the example to see what the Holy Spirit does in a person's life and ministry. Apostle Paul had about six personal encounters with the Lord Jesus. He had unusual spiritual experiences. However, when it comes to his dealings with the Holy Spirit, this great apostle depended on others. First, he was baptized with the Spirit through the laying of hands by Ananias. Then, he started the accomplishment of God's purposes for his life after 14 years when Barnabas, a man filled with the Holy Spirit, entered his life. And lastly, he received some precision related to God's purposes in his life through Agabus, a man full of the Holy Spirit. Brother Theo commented that the Holy Spirit is the vital general director of God's purposes and he works through a body of spirit-filled people. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of submission. The Holy Spirit is not a power that we use at will. He is a person that possesses people and leads them at will. In Acts 13 verses 1 to 4, again, we see the Holy Spirit, the director of God's purposes, at work in and through the body of spirit-filled and spiritually gifted people. In Antioch, they were together worshipping and fasting, and the Holy Spirit asked that Paul and Barnabas be set apart for the work to which he had called them. The Holy Spirit works out the revealed purposes of God through a body of spirit-filled people, Brother Theodore commented. In Acts 15, verses 23 to 28 again, we see an organ of mature leaders who attribute the decision they reached to the Lordship of the Holy Spirit, be it with Barnabas and Paul, the church in Antioch, or the extended body of leadership. It is the Holy Spirit who directs God's revealed purposes, and He is looking for people He will possess and direct at will. In Acts 13, verses 9 to 11 and 13, Paul had a second infilling of the Holy Spirit that provided him with gifts to face new challenges in the ministry. He was so much promoted that for the first time he was mentioned as Paul and his companions. In front of the challenges of the century and all the other Christs that arise, we need only one thing, the Holy Spirit. We need to be full of the Holy Spirit and his power to face the alignments of our generation. To close the night, Brother Thedor aligned the remaining two points to develop. First, how to receive the Holy Spirit, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit, how to receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Second, our goal is not the infilling with the Holy Spirit, but that a large army of critical leaders emerge for the accomplishment of the goal. The fastest means for that is the fullness of the Holy Spirit. But how do you emerge after receiving the fullness of the Spirit? Just like Saul or David, after receiving the fullness of the Spirit, you go back to faithfulness in your routines. It is on the pathway of your faithfulness in routines that you encounter the challenges for emergence. Be it with Saul, David, the judges, or the Lord Jesus, after the infilling, there is the challenge, and those who obey emerge. As for David, as for the Lord Jesus, as for the Apostle Paul, as for all men, as for Gentile, as for Gideon, as for you. And after the infilling will be the challenge. And those who will be the Lord.